Hello and welcome to the PC Security Channel. In this video, we will be testing the three most popular browsers, Firefox, Chrome, and Edge against 300 malware websites, and we'll see which one is the most secure. In order to do that, we have some custom code written down here. We've got an array of malware URLs. This is going to source it from various public blacklists. We're specifically gonna focus on downloadable exe malware and we're going to calculate the detection ratio. So let's get started. First off, we're going to try this out with Firefox. In order to do that, all we have to do is set the default browser. As you can see, we've done so. And now we're just going to execute our task script. So we'll say python browser task.py, hit enter, and here we go. As you can see, we're flying through the URLs. <laughs> you might wonder why we're only doing 300. Well, I've tried with more, but it just crashes the system. So we're really pushing this to the limit here. I'm pretty sure the browser was not intended to be run this way, but hey, we're gonna do an exciting test. So we've tried opening 300 URLs using Firefox. Of course, it's gonna take a while because um, some of these requests are pending. The websites are still being loaded. If we go into downloads, you can see many of these downloads are being blocked as they contain virus or malware. Many of them are being successfully downloaded. We're going to give it some time because we don't wanna calculate the detection ratio before the downloads are actually complete. As you can see, we've got a 372 megabyte file there. We click on show all downloads. It's a long list as you would expect. If we scroll around, you can see that some of the sites were blocked. The site ahead may contain harmful programs. This is powered by Google Safe Browsing, so it'll be interesting to see how this compares with Chrome. But it looks like we're good to go. So I'm just going to hit enter and we're gonna calculate the detection rate. Out of a total of 300 URLs, we were warned for 273 of them. That gives us a detection ratio of 93%, not bad. If we check out the downloads folder, you can see that we have some EXEs, a lot of partially downloaded files. Just so you understand the calculation process, the script is only counting URLs that are EXE and are also larger than a certain size, like 100 kilobytes, because we don't want these zero kilobyte files to be counted. We also don't want these partial downloads to be counted. All right, time for Chrome. So we're going to reset the default browser for HTTP to Chrome, and now we can just rerun the test. Don't worry, the test script cleans up the downloads folder as well, so don't, we don't have to worry about any traces from the last test. Geronimo. And once again, we're flying through the links, this time with Google Chrome. The downloads are being blocked as usual. We're seeing a lot of red, a lot of malware URLs being uh, noticed by Google. Give it some time. The UI is still struggling to display <laughs> the message. There we go. The site ahead contains harmful programs. Now, just so you know, Chrome even has something called enhanced protection. I don't think it changes a lot for the type of test we're running, but just so you know, but just so you know, there is that option to do that. Now, once again, if we check out our downloads, you will see that a lot of things are blocked because they're dangerous. One point of differentiation here is that there are some files where I believe it looks like everything that can be downloaded has been downloaded. But I just wanna mention that there are two types of alerts that Chrome provides. So one of them is that this file is dangerous, so Chrome has blocked it. So this is some sort of a detection. The other one is this file is not commonly downloaded and may be dangerous. And as a user, I've seen this prompt for legitimate files. So I guess this is just a popularity rating. So I guess this is like a partial detection because it's obviously not the same as detecting something as malware and blocking it outright because this gives you the option to keep it. And I'm sure if you're used to downloading legitimate files this way, you could potentially click yes on a prompt if the rest of the process is convincing from the attacker's perspective. So I just wanted to mention that if we hit enter, we've got a detection ratio of 95.67% with 287 URLs blocked. If we go into the downloads folder, you can see we've got some EXEs, a lot of unconfirmed downloads. 
But keep in mind, if we did not count the warnings that were issued, the detection rate would be significantly worse. But there's no easy way to do that automatically. So when we're testing 300 URLs, we just have to treat both of these alerts the same. Now we're going to move to Edge. Once again, we'll just change the default browser and we're good to go. Microsoft says it's the most secure browser. Let's see if it can deal with 300 links. Here we go. So far, we're just stuck with a whiteout as we're flying through the URLs. I believe it's just taking a while to load the UI because even Edge did not see this coming. <laughs> 300 malware URLs just being blasted at it. Finally, we've got a UI, yay. The site has been reported as unsafe. This is Microsoft Defender Smart Screen in action. <laughs> and now the downloads is not loading. Now, once again, what's interesting here is that Microsoft also has two types of alerts. So you've got things that were just blocked outright because they are considered unsafe. And then you have applications which could harm your device, but they give you the option to keep it. There are quite a few of these alerts scattered in here. As you can see, our testing script is going to count both of these as a full block. And I had to sell for that for automation reasons because there's no way for me to distinguish between this alert and this alert. But just something to keep in mind that the actual detection ratio, if you don't consider these as a block, would be much lower. But getting that out of the way, we have a full detection of 100%. Wow, so Edge was actually better at blocking malware. If we check the downloads folder, there's not a single exe in here. It's just unconfirmed downloads. So there you have it. I'm going to put the detection ratios on the screen for your convenience. Just keep in mind though that the detections with Chrome and Edge are a little bit boosted by the fact that they have this warning for files that they do not recognize or are unknown. And as a user, I don't know how I feel about that because I feel if I'm always getting this unknown fall warning, I might just click keep. And then obviously this would be a miss. But in defense of the browsers, I think it's also fair to say that not a lot of people would download custom programs that may not be downloaded by other people. So that sort of a popularity warning makes sense. I just wanted to explain how we got to the test results. So that's pretty clearly Edge at the top, followed by Google Chrome, followed by Firefox. Not surprised that Chrome and Firefox performed quite similarly because they both use Google Safe Browsing. Edge, of course, uses Microsoft Defender and Smart Screen. It also makes sense that Edge is better at blocking these threats because they are mostly threats for Windows. And obviously Microsoft has more of a vested interest in working specifically on Windows security. Whereas Chrome and Firefox would not have that many resources going into finding and reporting Windows malware. I hope you enjoyed this test. It was super fun to do. Just throwing these URLs at the browser, engineering everything on the back end, putting the array of links together, and then trying at different times to see how many links I can get away with before the system just crashes. So please like and share the video if you appreciate that. This video is brought to you by Guardio, a web extension that you can add to any browser to protect you from cyber threats. Once installed, it's going to scan your browser for malicious extensions, notifications, information leaks, or hijackers. It can also look at your emails and figure out if they've been part of any data breaches. And once set up, it is going to actively protect you in real time against any malicious websites that you end up visiting. Cardio is also available for teams and can protect your business from attacks like phishing. In order to demonstrate, we're at Fish Tank, that's a repository of phishing links. These are websites that are going to attempt to steal your credentials as you visit them. But we do have Cardio installed on this browser, so we'll see what it can do. And as you can see, the moment we try to visit the site, it is blocked by Guardio. And because it's based in the web browser, it doesn't really matter where the link comes from. It's going to stop you from visiting it, whether it was in a spear phishing email or you just stumbled across it in the search engine. And it doesn't matter whether it's on Mac or PC, which is pretty important because you can still get phished on Mac. Once installed, you will also have access to a personalized dashboard that's going to show you all the statistics. With Guardio Premium, you can monitor up to five emails for information leaks, so it's a great way to bolster cybersecurity. These days, it's just as important to protect your online assets since everything's interconnected and digital. One of your accounts being compromised can lead to a domino effect, so it's crucial to keep monitoring your emails and passwords and 
make sure that they're not leaked anywhere. And Guardio can help you do that. So go ahead and check out Guardio using the link in the description or go to guard.io slash PC security team and show them some love for sponsoring the channel. This is Leo. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, stay informed, stay secure.